Today, we're going through all of my non-metallic metal attempts in the last 10 years of hobbying, and I'm gonna tell you why they're trash and how you can do better. What up, mini family? NMM, or non-metallic metal, is the art of using paints without reflective pigments in them, like silver and gold, and instead trying to emulate that result with black, grays, and whites for silver, yellows, oranges, and browns for gold, etc. In my opinion, it is the single most concentrated technique for displaying that you have an advanced grasp of how light interacts with the complex shapes on our models. Because this is such a great technique for what is effectively flexing in the mini painting world, you'll very often see it on display models, competition models, etc. On the flip side, it's also very challenging to pull off convincingly, which leads to pretty bad attempts like we'll see in today's video, and on the internet at large. Ten years ago, my journey toward creamy, shiny godhood began. Back in 2012, I was working on a Blood Angel Army commission that a lot of you are likely familiar with. Because I was an idiot, I thought it'd be a good idea to experiment on a commission. Side note, this makes me an idiot because the whole point of a commission is to pay for an expected result, like literally any other product. Also, experimenting makes the process take longer, and who wants to spend more time painting other people's minis? Be smarter than me. At that time, I had purchased a book called The Evy Metal Masterclass, and in it was a gold NMM guide by none other than Darren Latham. Evy Metal, if you don't know, is the team at Games Workshop responsible for creating all of the lovely box arts you see on their packaging. I tried to follow the guide for some Sanguinary Guard, and also Dante, the Chapter Master, and it didn't go so well. Before you all rush to the comment section and furiously type, if I had that result, I'd be happy, I'd like to distinguish something. In this entire video, I'm commenting on how well the NMM effect is selling. Not necessarily how well the blends are, or even how good something looks. All I really care about is does it look like metal? And in the case of Banana Boys over here, we couldn't be further from gold. So, what went wrong? There's a lot of failure going on with just these two models, so let's hone in on a couple of mistakes. The gold color I chose is pretty anemic looking. If it were richer with more oranges and warming yellows, it would sell the idea much more easily. A desaturated gold color can totally work for NMM, it's just a little bit harder. I also have way too much yellow tan midtone dominating the entire model. I had no understanding of highlight and shadow distribution, which I will get into in detail later. You notice that I have a ton of contrast, but it doesn't really matter because of that aforementioned problem. Lastly, I really didn't have an understanding of volumetric lighting, which means I didn't know where to place highlights and shadows on the model based on some imaginary light source. It seems like I just highlighted toward the edges of details, and that was kind of it. I kind of gave up on NMM for a long time after my two pretty underwhelming attempts, and revisited it in 2016 with Bonesaw and Cosset, both Guild Ball models. These minis are a great example of a model to practice NMM on. It's only a small part of the mini, and it's for a skirmish game, so you can take longer on each individual mini without feeling like you're making no progress. So, experiment away. Again, lots of contrast, but just poorly distributed. And what I mean by that is, while I do have all of the colors I'd want represented on Bonesaw's Bonesaw, I guess? They're just misrepresented. I have white and near white, but it covers some 0.5% of the weapon blade, whereas it should be much greater, and that would reduce the, again, dominating midtone of gray. Still in 2016, I then experimented on Gaius Politis, a model from Arena Rex. I remember doing experiments like painting the parts of the model that would eventually be metallic with glossy paints or covering it in tin foil, snapping a picture and cranking the contrast to see where highlights and shadows would fall naturally on the model. And despite that, still got pretty unconvincing results. Don't get me wrong, the blending was pretty well executed, but it reads more like stone and less like steel. Some parts are better than others, but I have two larger learning lessons here. One, I need to break up larger surfaces of metal, like the flat of the axe, with other secondary and tertiary highlights and shadows. I do that a little bit with the cuts and scratches, but in general, it kind of looks like one giant gradient. This would also help with, again, simply too much gray midtone, a problem that seems to be persisting. Randomization helps emulate reality, especially when it comes to a big, flat piece of metal. Two, I had no consideration for the money shot. 
The money shot of this model is from the front, and all of the NMM effects from that viewing angle are not great, especially the inside flat of the axe. Considering the size of the model that will attract the most attention to your viewer is important when planning out your NMM, which we'll define further after a break to thank this video's sponsor. Collective Studio is formed from industry veterans from collectibles to games. They offer pre-supported miniatures for painting and playing both in 32mm and 75mm scales. Right now in the month of October, they're showing off their new collection called Under the Veil of Darkness. Because October is the spoopiest of months, Collective Studio included a Mind Flayer creature if you need a little anthropomorphic cephalopod man who can also control you with his mind in your life. They also included alien monsters and underdark themed scenery pieces to match the denizens of Veil of Darkness. To sweeten the deal, each new patron gets access to a welcome pack called the Dragon's Fall, which gets larger and larger over time. Currently, the pack includes an ancient red dragon, young black dragon, dragon folk minions, empty bases for customization, and condition rings. In October, the Dragon's Vault will see a new addition in the form of Ezekiel, a Halloween-themed miniature. If you get in early on this Patreon, you can grab a special discounted price, 13 bucks a month instead of 15. Patrons of Collective Studio also get access to a monthly 50% off coupon for their My Mini Factory web store. So if they made an STL in the past that you really like, you can get it for super cheap. If you want to try out one of their designs before becoming a patron, they're offering viewers of this channel a 10% off coupon for their My Mini Factory as well. And if that isn't good enough, they have a free model available for you to try out. Subscribe at their Tribes or Patreon to receive more than 30 miniatures each month and check out their My Mini Factory store for past packs and individual miniatures. All those items are linked down below. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Collective Studio. Now on to more NMM failures. In 2016, I was determined to improve my NMM game and what better way than painting a model that's almost entirely metal, a gold suit of armor. I took some pictures with the pewter model from Andrea Miniatures from all angles I cared about. I figured if the model was pewter, I might as well take advantage of it. These photos would be my highlight and shading roadmap for the entire model. I wouldn't have to think about complicated shapes and lights. I could just follow this and worry about blending and color selection. To autopilot the color selection, I remember buying a Scale of 75's NMM Gold set and following the guide in the box. I definitely have the kind of personality that likes to solve something, or at least convince myself that I've solved something, so that I can better focus on the task at hand. In this case, I have two solutions for complicated choices and can now just focus solely on something else instead of overwhelming myself. Unfortunately, this is when I realized that my solutions weren't really foolproof. Don't get me wrong, in some places the effect is definitely convincing, like her hip armor, her leg or breast armor. I actually remember copying an old Enrique Velasco box art of Elrond because the armor looked similar, but you can also see how my highlights match my reference photo as well. Beg, borrow, and steal all you need when it comes to highlight and shadow placement. It's one of the hardest things to master when it comes to NMM, in my opinion. This is where I learned that reference photos are not the holy grail of how to do NMM. Her thigh plates, for instance, are largely dark toward the top, and they look really bad. I had very little understanding of light sources. While the biggest and most important light source is captured in my reference photo, the light from above, effectively every object in your scene that reflects light, even in the smallest way, is also a light source, like the environment surrounding this glistening gold object, essentially. You can actually see the brown of the plinth reflected in the silver of the model, and I did not pick up on what was going on there back in 2016. This model took me well over 150 hours of painstaking painting to get through, and it was an incredible learning experience, but also very taxing mentally. At every step of the way, I was snapping photos, getting feedback, adjusting something, and it definitely helped me grow, but it was challenging. In 2017, I had another unconvincing Guild Ball model attempt and a simple gold attempt on a Malifaux model. I actually tried to use a warmer shadow to pump up the saturation of the midtone, but that didn't really do anything. And then, bam! I think I definitely figured something out with Ghast, another Guild Ball mini. Still using the same anemic NMM gold colors from Scale 75, though. What I really figured out with this weapon, however, was to have much less midtone. Look at how much bright highlight and shadow there is in comparison to that gray middle color. I almost skip over it entirely. 
I learned to break up my areas of shadow with more highlights as well. I think those secondary highlights could be a little bit more random, however, in that they shouldn't all be the same width, same brightness, and also spaced equidistantly almost. In 2018, I continued with my Guild Ball team using more of that teal to not a very convincing effect on a fully metal memory model. I think I just didn't take the time to apply what I knew about NMM, which is an important thing to talk about. Sometimes you know what you're looking for, but you don't have the most efficient route to get there. And in my case, NMM continues to this day to still be a very fussy process of back and forth adjustments. And I likely didn't want to spend the time to go through that on this little figure. I began to play around with copper on this Emperor's Champion commission to pretty convincing effect in some areas. I like how earlier in the video I was like, don't experiment on commissions. But then six years later, I'm still doing it apparently. I guess only play with fire if you're okay with the risk of getting burned. Notice how some areas of highlight are larger and smaller and other areas are different brightness. That trick really helps on the shoulder trim. And while I didn't realize it, I was also doing what was effectively black NMM on the power armor. And again, on this soul drinker marine, but with purple instead. You can see I made the same mistake on both of them, however. On the rounded chest of the Emperor's Champion and the shoulder of the Soul Drinker, the shape of my highlight doesn't match the shape of the object. Instead of that highlight being a streak like you might see on a cylindrical shape, it should be more rounded because, you know, spheres and shit. At this point in my NMM career, I kind of felt like I had a decent enough amount figured out to make a helpful video, which is when I painted this gold smoke knight from Kingdom Death. I incorporated my knowledge of highlight distribution, environmental bounce lights, how the shape of the object determines the shape of the highlight, considering the main viewing angles, everything. In this example, I think I added too much out of scale brushed metal striation all over. This is a technique that I had learned in a recent Michael Pasarski NMM class. We had practiced on a bust, not a model the night scale. I don't think I thought much about the implications of how the technique of making many small lines would translate across scales. Metal striations at 112, the scale of the bust I painted in that class, would be almost 20 times smaller at the night scale. In 2019, I taught a couple of private lessons regarding NMM and made another video about NMM, but I still had and continue to have many things to learn. Here was an attempt at a faster NMM job where I fussed less about blending. I think if I snuck some more shadow up into that mid-tone, this would probably be a lot better. I also wanted to work on chain mail or scale mail, like on this unfortunate Thor conversion. Tiny head aside, the process is to paint the metal parts as if there is no detail on them. And then once you've gotten a convincing effect, come in and give definition to all those edges and recesses. At least that's what I tried. In 2020, I did a pretty convincing job on some copper NMM and a converted Inquisitor model. Notice again how I'm basically skipping over the midtone on these small gold elements. A lot more sparkly white and near white dots can be a quick hack to achieve a believable reflective look, especially on the smaller details. In 2021, I explored more colorful NMM results with a photorealism experiment that works but also doesn't work. Again, reference images are not the holy grail. It's very challenging to create a scaled down world for the purposes of taking a reference picture in the first place. Do you have access to a 32 millimeter sun? I don't. Aside from that, reality can be a little boring and taking some artistic license to make something more visually appealing is really where your style as an artist shines, which is a whole different beast. In my next attempt, I finally settled on a rich gold color that really sells as gold metal. Shout out to Rodrigo Acore for sharing his recipe for gold NMM on Instagram. The shoulder pads were harder to create a convincing effect on, but her breast armor looks really great. I have bounce reflections, secondary highlights that match the shape of the object, and a nice big main circular highlight. I'm cruising, team. I'm an NMM god. The steel on the weapon also looks pretty great. I think this is one of the most convincing attempts at NMM that I've had to date. The trim on the armor could use another pass of highlights, however, bringing it up to something closer to the weapon. It looked okay when I first did it, but white has a tendency to fade overnight, and I remember being kind of lazy when I was making this video and just moving on. I then painted Guinevere from Big Child Creatives, and the only area where I unintentionally messed up was the viewing angle of the model. Her forearm looks good from this position, but not the main money shot position of that front-on photo. If I had rotated the highlight more to the top 
of that van brace, this front on shot would be more convincing. Planning out your viewing angles is so important because NMM fails to replicate reality when the viewer moves around the model and all those twinkly highlights mysteriously stay put. This becomes even more immersion breaking when you make mistakes like I did, the main angle of your model being problematic without moving the mini in the first place. You want three to four angles for your model that makes sense from a physics standpoint. As someone rotates your model around in the hand, those handful of angles kind of meld together into what seems like a NMM paint job that works even when moving. If you're the kind of person who thinks NMM always falls apart when moving the model around, you just haven't seen good NMM. I'll link an Instagram video from Andy Wardle, an amazing painter, rotating around a fully NMM gold miniature, and you let me know when that effect stops working. To pat myself on the back a little bit, I'm starting to better figure out scale mail. I think the highlighted areas need to be a bit bigger, but I'm happy with the overall contrast. What I learned here was that not every scale gets the same edge highlight color. The further away from the main highlight you get, the less bright the edge highlight should be on each individual scale. Lastly, we arrive at 2022 where I'm kind of playing around with NMM, seeing how little work I can put into it while still getting a convincing effect. This blade model still took me around six hours, however. My last biggest effort NMM trial was on the Ranger, one of the Wood Elf models from my Kickstarter campaign. While the green tinged steel works, I tried to do a green tinged copper and it kind of just murdered the copper effect that I had previously figured out. That brings us to the present day. There are still so many things for me to learn regarding non-metallic metals, such as how to do darker steel while also still looking shiny, or adding in chromatic aberration to my highlights, an effect that humans are familiar with due to the advent of photography. This effect sells the bright highlights so much because we view so much of our lives through photography, whereas that yellow tinged highlight would regularly not exist. I would also love to figure out how to do NMM quickly so it doesn't have to feel like I'm always paying a portion of my soul to get a good looking result each time. Well team, that's my non-metallic metal journey that started 10 years ago. What do you guys think? Are you at a similar place in your journey compared to me or somewhere earlier or maybe even more advanced? It's important to remember that this technique takes a lot of effort and practice over time to really start getting believable results. Even after 10 years, I'm nowhere near people like Arnal Lathero or Kirill Kanaev. If there's anything I want you to take away from this video about learning NMM, it's this message right here. Please allow yourself the opportunity to mess up gloriously. Even worse than anything I've shown here. The skill ceiling is very high and the technique is hard. Your first attempts will look bad, I promise. But it'll be okay. You'll slowly get better over time. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you like NMM or wanna learn more about it, I have two other videos that kinda of go over the process of doing NMM, both showing the entire painting process and also explaining the physics behind it. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, there are a number of ways you can do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects, or how NMM is clearly superior to TMM. Don't even joke with me. You can also buy hobby tools that I recommend linked down in the description. Those links are affiliate links and I earn a little extra money and no extra cost to you when using those links. You can buy my model, the Duchess or a digital course that I made that shows you how to paint the entire box art stroke for stroke. You can buy cool things that I have in my web store like this cutting mat, double-sided with Imperial on one side and metric on the other with cool Miniac designs. And that's it. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay my mana!